Hey guys, welcome back to another video talking about not only the Ricoh GR3, but if that's not your camera, that's okay. We're gonna talk DSLR street photography. We're gonna talk all kinds of street photography. The last three or four months, I've been working with the Ricoh GR3, and I've been out on the street taking over 2,500 shots. How do I know I've taken over 2,500 shots? because in Lightroom, it'll show me that I've taken over 2,500 shots. Technically, it's 2,492 is in my street folder, but if I include the shots I did in the small town video, uh, shooting small town, which ended up being, honestly, street photography as well, because there were some dudes on bikes, or bikes, some, uh, some bikers that uh, I took pictures of, so that did put me over 2,500 frames. So. Typically, as you look at my videos, when I go out, I'm shooting about 300 photos. That's about what the battery will take with the Ricoh GR3. And uh, I, I typically try to take that spare battery, but after 300 shots, I'm pretty well spent. I'm pretty much done. Out of that, surprisingly, I've been posting about 100 shots, 100 images per video, which, which is kind of amazing. Uh, you know, you hear guys say, hey, if you go out and shoot an hour and you get one or two photos, that's a great day. You're lucky. You've got something to be proud of there. And, and that's probably true. At least half of the photos that I post in my videos, I would not normally post anywhere. I would not say, hey, look, these are some great street photos or, or what have you. But in order for you to see how I'm using the camera, how I use techniques and, and, and my, my little tricks or whatever the case might be, that's why I put, put those on there. A lot of them are, are not all that thrilling. I have a couple Indianapolis street photography videos in the can. I almost released that one of those today, but since every one of these videos are the same geographic area, they may be getting a little tiring, getting a little old on the eyes. I understand that. I'm the first one that started feeling that, and then we had a couple comments, so I, I get that. So I'm going to Cincinnati. I know you've all heard of Cincinnati. I'm going to Cincinnati this week. By the way, this microphone is awesome. I know when I hit on this table or ruffle these papers, that thing's picking up great. That's my, uh, what, what the hell is that? That's my Rode VideoMic Pro Plus. That thing, $299, it's in the description below. You can pick one of those up. It's on my Canon EOS RP, for those of you uh, playing along at home, keeping track. And uh, just, I, I, you know, this is my one of my favorite spots, although I did get stung by, ooh, look at that, it's starting to, I did get stung by a uh, wasp earlier. I was trying to move one of the picnic tables, and apparently there's a home there of wasp, and they didn't want to be moved, so they let me know about it. This is one of the first times I've been stung in forever, and I'm surprised my arm's not swollen up. It may look like I've worked out if it did, but uh, that'd be a first. At any rate, so uh, I don't know why I got off on that, but, but here we are. Oh, I'm sorry, the camera itself. Hopefully it's uh, the depth of field and all that looks really good here. But again, we're using the, uh, the Canon EOS RP with that uh, Rode VideoMic Pro Plus for those of you that uh, uh, want to know how this video is made. So I, I had to decide what I wanted to talk about in this video, whether I wanted to go through um, some things that I've come across in my 2,500 photos or if I just want to go through some of the comments on the videos that I have posted. And I think what I'm going to do today is, is now we're going to transition over into some of the comments because with your comments, I can also talk about and expand upon some of the techniques and things I do in, in street photography. So first one, we're going backwards here. Uh, and I'll put these names on the screen because I will not be able to pronounce most of them. Seb over the rainbow says, thanks a lot. Uh, this is video number 13, point of view video number 13, which I believe is the, the latest one. And he says, thanks a lot. I will walk in the street of Paris like you. I hope you awesome. You're awesome too, Seb over the rainbow. Thank you. And yes, man, what I'd give to be in Paris, be able to do Paris street photography. I've never been out of the United States. Probably I'll never go out of the United States. Geo Gallant says, I've been going out this past week trying different things on the GR3. Cool to see someone else going through kind of the same thing at the same time. Really good pics in this video. Well, first of all, thanks Geo, and I'm glad to see that, that you're out, and I hope that you're getting good results with your Ricoh GR3 as well. Mike Ward says, another great video. Thanks, looking forward to some new locales. That brings us back. Now, I, again, I, that, I, I certainly was not offended by that by any means, Mike, I appreciate that. And you kind of validated, you and a few other folks validated the way I've been feeling of, you know, it's easy for me and I'm very comfortable now going down to my local downtown and shooting, but I know you guys are getting tired of seeing the same street scenes. 
So I'm gonna go to Cincinnati. I know regardless of where you are in the world, you've probably heard of Cincinnati and uh, Louisville. Louisville's had some race problems, race rioting going on, still kind of going on, so I'm a little leery, but I am going to make an effort to do that. I've got a couple more from Indianapolis in the can, but I'm holding off just to, just to, to, to space them out a little bit. And uh, Ian Livesley says, thanks for the journey. It has been a heck of a journey, Ian. I mean, it's been a heck of a journey, and I, I do appreciate you going on it with me. The radio interview video, we've seen that one where I was interviewed on a local radio station. It's a guy I know. I've known him for a long time, and uh, he brought me on, and we talked a little bit street photography. And uh, we have Travis Brooks that said, this is awesome. I just subbed a few days ago, and you have motivated me to get a Ricoh GR3. I'm not sure what he means by subbed. I don't know if that's substitute teaching or what that means, S-U-B-B-E-D. Uh, but whatever you did, you subbed to get the money to buy a Ricoh GR3, get that Ricoh GR3. There's a link in the description down below that you can click and it'll take you to, uh, to Amazon and get you a, a great deal on that. And it does help the channel, so I do appreciate that. Jonathan, he, he's replied quite a few times to my videos. And he says, cheers, Jason. Interesting interview. It's good to hear your point of view doing the POVs point of views, i.e. what you are thinking while you're doing them. When you watch them, it comes across how little people really notice you, but when you're actually taking the photos, it just doesn't feel like that. I guess we all have a level of self-consciousness. It does feel like everybody's looking at you. When I'm in the downtown circle area there, I feel like everybody's watching me. And they probably are just because, well, here's a guy walking around with a, looks like a bomb vest on. So it is weird, but that's why I said if you uh, don't have the bomb vest on uh, and you're just using your, you know, your, your Rico here uh, or a, a big DSLR, whatever the case is, and you ask for that photo, it does take a little bit of that intimidation off. Mambo, Mambo, Mambo has got a, uh, I believe he's got his own, he does have his own channel. You want to go check that out and it's on the screen there, Mambo Farido. You're really good with interacting with people. Well, thank you, Mambo, I appreciate that. And, and again, a lot of times I'm, I'm nervous when I'm doing it. And um, if somebody called me out, I would be very embarrassed at the time. And Mr. Pamplemoose says, have, have just started following your Instagram also and always look forward to your next YouTube videos. I'm not an Instagram guy, I'm sorry, I just can't get it. I just don't know how you guys do it. It just, it's so much work. I don't know how you guys do it, keep up with it. I tried to post here for about a week or so and it's just, I don't know, I guess I'll keep going. Andy Dean says, your enthusiasm is so infectious, please keep up the great work. Well, I appreciate that. What I lack in talent, hopefully I make up for it in enthusiasm. Uh, Clavsash, Clavsash is another regular commentator, and he says, keep up the good work. I, I, have to find, I have to find ways to look past the plywood. Trust me, Indianapolis is a beautiful city and it's terrible to see it all boarded up, as all cities probably are right now. Hopefully we'll get past this. Simon Warren says, I, get, I also get occasional memory card errors. Now what he's talking about is every now and then, uh, the Ricoh GR3 will lock up on me as far as the memory card. I, I say every now and then, it's only ha happened maybe twice to me, and I think it was the memory card. I think I had a cheap memory card. I just bought a new memory card, and it's in the Canon EOS RP right now, so I hope it's doing well. And I'll link it down below. It was $20 for a 64 gig, but it's a 90 megabyte card, but 170 megabyte transfer, so in theory, when you put it in your computer, and drag it over to your computer, it should go a lot faster at 170 megabytes. So I'll find out here when I get home today. Point of view video number 12, Adam Ryder says, I like the videos, would be cool to see some different areas and times of day. Gotcha, Adam. Cincinnati coming up. Assuming I don't get shot down there. I don't know what's going on down there. Um, Jonathan is back again. I wish I had the weather you're having, Jason. It's cloudy. That's why I came out here today. No sun today. It's rained on and off in the UK for weeks now. Another great POV really enjoying them. I like your style. I just ordered the JJC thumb grip, so looking forward to trying it. The JJC thumb grip, it's not on here. Where's it? It's in my bag. I'm not going to mess with it. JJC thumb grip, it's in the link below. It's in every video I do. You want to go check that out and, and get you one of those. Only about 12 bucks. I can't live without it. I can't use a camera, honestly, without it. Should have came with the camera. Vele, I'm sure that's not how you pronounce that. Vele, ha ha. The way you pop off those rounds reminds me how I used to play COD. That would be Call of Duty. Person after person like an ambot. Great shooting, mate. Well, thanks, Vele. 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 
And it is. I always kind of look at it like fishing, but but actually, you're you're right on. Actually, it's it's more like like a, like a video game, and, and it's like boom, nailed that guy. Boom, got that guy. Ah, oh, there's a miss. Ah, oh, there's a miss. Ah, oh, got that guy. I am hitting one out of three, so I'm not a video game guy, but maybe I'd uh, maybe I should be looking into that. Johan Rodhart, Rudhart. Hello, Jason. I recently subscribed to your channel. Thank you. And please, if you could subscribe, I'd appreciate that as well. Like the videos you make. Without having to travel, I can still kind of be there and get plunged into what you show us. Nice interactions with the people you meet. Well, thank you very much. And that, that's why I do it. I mean, that is exactly why I do it. If it wasn't entertaining, I probably wouldn't watch either. Uh, oh, and he, he goes on. Thanks, uh, thinking of getting a GR3 myself. A question, though, I'd like to ask. On the internet, I read about experiences that people write about saying the Rico gets uncomfortably hot after just a short amount of time using it. What can you say about that? And I can say that uh, I think the thumb grip helps because my hand's not completely wrapped around it, so it's got some space to breathe. And I've not seen it within the hour and a half or so that I use it get hot. It, it's warm. I think the uh, the GoPro gets hotter than the, uh, than the Rico GR3. And I'm shooting 300 shots within an hour, hour and 20 minutes, so it should get hot, but it, it really doesn't. Um, I mean, when you open it up, it's warm. I mean, I probably wouldn't use it much longer than that, but you know, without letting it cool off in a new battery. But um, so I really haven't had a problem with that. Uh, Marcel Mutz says, Jason, we definitely watched the following video. You are lucky with the nice weather here in the here with us in Europe. It is less nice pictures. Man, you guys sound like you're having a bummer summer there in Europe. Um, Sabash Ray, this is a different Sabash, Shabash Ray, you have insanely nice photography and creative photography tricks. I don't have a lot of tricks, just some things I, I do that come natural. If you'll notice, I'm swelling up here a little bit here with my wasps thing. If you notice, a lot of times you'll see me cut people off. They'll be coming this way, I'm coming this way, and I'll just, right? And they'll have to move over. The COVID thing, I think you're supposed to be left and right, Oh well, I mean, they're, 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 we're still six feet apart. It's just, I'm the idiot that doesn't understand you're supposed to walk down the right side of the street, left side of the street, whatever the case might be. But as you watch the videos, think of that because that's how you get people right in front of you and pissed. So they're like, right? <laughs> Click, and you've got that great look of them looking at you. Always try to get them looking at you. That's the hardest thing. If you get them looking at you, that's the eye contact is what makes that photo. Butt shots are great, shots from behind are great, they're creative and all that, but you gotta, you gotta graduate to the point where people are looking at you when you take that photo, try. Mambo Faridou, Faridou again is back. He says, love it, reminds me of Gary Winograd style of photography. Uh, is, is it Winograd, Winograd, Winograd? Um, he's the, I think he's the older guy I was talking about that just kind of walk around with a flash. Does he use the flash? He's just like, eh, eh, eh. I mean, he's an old guy though, right? When I'm 65, which is you know it's a few years away, um, 70, man, that's going to be fantastic. If I'm able to walk, I'm going up to every person. I don't care whether it's a it's a good-looking woman, a, um, a homeless guy, some dude that just has a Google eye or goofy or whatever, and I'm taking everybody's picture because what are you going to do to an old guy? To me, you'll punch me, but you know, what are you going to do to an old guy? So, if you're old or young, you've got it made on street photography. I'm telling you. Okay, so. Jonathan's back. This is uh, five things I like about my Ricoh GR3. This was the last video I did where I sat at, the, at, the, at a picnic table and talked. And Jonathan says uh, again, uh, Hi Jason, another great video. Apparently the dust is collected on a sticky tray under the sensor. The dust is shook off by ultrasound waves during lens cleaning the GR3 rock. So what he's talking about is, I made the comment that uh, the, the GR3 is the only one of the GRs that actually has the, the, the sensor cleaner. And it's a micro shake and it shakes off whatever the dust is and it's collected on a little strip down there at the bottom, which seems to me like that strip would eventually clog up or something, but apparently they expect the life of the camera for it not to do that because we are talking about microscopic dust. But, see this? This is my GA1, $49. I know it's, it's but this is $900, $49, $900. Now, while I'm doing that, I do want to point out something else. This is listed below. I have in my Canon EOS RP 67 millimeter, 67 millimeter filters, okay? Instead of buying a bunch of filters for 49 millimeter filters for my Ricoh GR3, 
I have the 49 millimeter UV filter on there, which is, is, I don't do that with my Canons or any other cameras. The more glass you have, the more potential you have for, you know, problems. But the protection is worth more to me long term than the perfect shot. I'm not doing these as professional money making photos, right? Now, I went out and for a couple bucks, it's listed below, less than 10 bucks, this Fox Ox, I don't know what this is. Photo Ox, Photo X, okay, whatever. It's listed below. I can't read it. Uh, it's a 49 millimeter to 67 millimeter adapter, right? So what you do is, I put my UV filter on there. I leave it on. I never take it off. And I just screw this on. Screws on. Okay, it does. Trust me. There we go. Screws right on. You don't want to, doesn't need to be janked over too hard because you're putting another one. Then I take my 67 millimeter. This is a, a 10, a, an ND10 filter. And we're going to go out to some waterfalls here and uh, use this thing, an ND10. But if you wanted to use a, uh, a circular polarizer, anything like that, then you just pop that in there. Screw that on and check that out. I didn't have to go out and buy a whole bunch of new lenses or new filters and things like that. And, you know, sometimes the screw on filters, when you buy the exact size for your lens, whether you have a DSLR or any camera, um, sometimes the little defringing, what do they call that? Vig, vig, vig netting? Vig, vig, ugh, vig netting? Uh, vig, I'm a Hoosier. Vig netting. Um, whatever that is, vig net, whatever. Vignetting. Vignetting. A little vignetting. You get that around there, so you always, you know, whatever, you got to crap around that. With these, you shouldn't have that problem because it's bigger than the actual lens, so there's no size. So that's kind of cool. I'm looking forward to that, and I'll make a video about that. But at any rate, back to the questions. Pete Gleason. Thanks, Pete. Pete says, another interesting video. Do you know much about the Rico freeze that I've seen on other forums? I haven't had a freeze. I, again, the, the memory card kind of screwed up, but I just popped the memory card out and popped it back in. And I think it was a memory card wasn't capable of uh, keeping up with uh, I, my click, 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 too many clicks. I don't know, because I think at that time I was trying JPEG also. So it was, it was cramming a lot in there. When you got a 90 millimeter, a 90 megabyte card and you're your, your each photo is going to take what is what is it 25 megabytes and then you got a JPEG in there for another 12 or and you take three or four you're over 100 and it's it's like hold on so I think I don't know I'm no expert Simon's back Simon Warger Simon says just got the JJC thumb rest and a GA1 you're on top of things there Simon I also put a small 49 millimeter lens hood on the filter and just a cheap one off Amazon, and that's all you need. They're linked below. 10 bucks, 12 bucks, whatever the case might be. There you go. There you have it. Addy Fontanosa says, really engaging, man. Gave me stitches with the brief commentary on the lawnmower, man. Well, they're not cutting grass today, so I, I chose the right day. Rico GR3 ironically became my main gear and not my DSLR. Heck, it's what I can carry around every day and take photos with. I don't know if it's because I do the videos or, or what, but yeah, I've been been... 90% of my shooting is with my Ricoh GR3. The Canon EOS RP is my workhorse. It's kind of nice though to give it a little break. Uh, not give it a break, but just not overuse it too much. I just got done doing a real estate shoot and uh, where you go in and you take pictures of their house so they can list it for sale. And I use it for that and it's, it's phenomenal for that. It blows my T3i away. So I'm really glad I picked up on that. And that's a full frame camera, by the way. And that's, that's what's shooting this video right now. Alex Zaffer says, this is the only camera I shoot almost exclusively in JPEG, sometimes RAW plus JPEG, depending on what the intentions are that day. I'm a RAW shooter for all other cameras. And then he says, I shoot photography and video professionally, but there is something about the positive film effect in the GR, which he has customized, uh, that produces wonderful colors out of the camera. What he's saying is, put it on JPEG, use the positive film effect, and maybe you don't need to do a lot of editing in Lightroom and that sort of thing. It goes on to say, I use this camera like a snap shooter. I don't want to spend time processing the photos afterwards. I already spend far too much time in front of the computer screens and my other work as it is. I'm sure a lot of you have that same situation. Uh, with a slight tweak, the Ricoh GR's out-of-camera JPEGs are very impressive, similar to Fuji's. Mostly, however, I shoot black and white with the GR. It has the most epic dy dynamic range of monochrome options. I love to use them on sunny days using highlight weighted mode. Yes, sir. 
Uh, you have to really hunt for the right scenes to make it work. Dramatic, contrasty, moody, make the blue skies almost black and the clouds pop. I've started in the last couple videos, three or four videos, I went back and forth on highlight weighted, now I always use it. At first I thought, well, it's, it's, it's when I shoot into a, um, when you shoot into a shady area, you've got a lot of sun over here, you shoot, it's kind of screwy, and they, but you just got to deal with it. You got to let it, let it, let it read its meter first, and 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 work with it. But you got to work, you got to work through those things. You just got to use the camera and get comfortable with it. Uh, but that's the, I'm talking about the highlight weighted mode. Okay, so he goes on talks about how what a beast the Ricoh GR3 is, and uh, it's a year later, and he still gets excited and expire and inspired to use it every single day. So there's a guy that's had it for over a year. Obviously, he doesn't have a lot of boogers and things like that in the sensor or dust and all that. Um, he's not dropped it, broken it, and it, 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 it's not overheated and blown up on him, so apparently uh, he's fine with his. So Alex uh, from Point of View video number nine says, I've been a street photographer for many years walking the streets of Toronto and Hamilton, Ontario. Excellent. That's awesome though to hear, hear from Canada. Right on. Clapsash is back. I'm really enjoying your videos, Jason. The last two have me reevaluating the snap focus. India is a much better place for street than Atlanta. Okay, so Clapsash is from Atlanta. Uh, hopping over to Instagram to give you a follow. You, sir, have a voice for radio. Well, thank you so much, Clapsash. And now that you mentioned that, I will once again point out that you can go listen to my audio podcast, the new weekly audio podcast that is going to come out every Tuesday at 2 p.m. New York time or Atlanta time uh, on the same time zone there as Indiana. And I've already got one posted there for this week and I will continue on every week with those audio podcasts. You can get those by going to The Stealth Photographer. That's T-H-E, Stealth Photographer. The Stealth Photographer. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Hashtag Instagram for me, if you would. Is that how you do that? You guys put hashtag the street photographer? I think somebody else had that hashtag, but I don't know if they uh, have control of the actual hashtag page. Do you have control of the hashtag page? I'm not sure. So anyway, I'm working on that. Social media to me is, it's there. I use it all the time, but mainly Facebook, so I don't know. I'm still at Twitter's, I, I just don't, what's the point? I don't know. WC Dogside. I'm a street photographer from Long Beach, California. I'm getting a kick out of how friendly and accommodating people are where you live, especially the couple you had walk across the street a few times. Again, this is back in point of view video number nine. As, um, part of it also, your low key approach when dealing with people on the street. You got a nice presence about you, sir. Nice work. Well, thank you, sir. I appreciate it. As a matter of fact, in point of view video number 10, I even gave WC Dogside a shout out because now in every video I do, I have one goal, well not the only goal, but I do have the goal of at some point in the video to get somebody to do something they normally wouldn't be doing. Walk back across the street for me. Go over there and walk this way. Go over there and pose or do something. But it, 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 what, is, what, I'm, what I'm literally trying to do, and I'm laughing inside when I do it, is I want to see if I can get these people to completely stop what they're doing and totally devote the next two, three minutes to me. They walk across a big intersection. Excuse me, can I get you to go back and walk across that intersection again? I just want to take a picture of it. Okay. You know, people are cool, man. Maybe not where you are, I guess, but it, and it surprises me every time. It surprises me every time, every single time. I'm sure I'd be a jerk, say no. Uh, Thomas Gregor, do you shoot JPEGs with your GR3? No, I don't. I probably should for the experimental purposes of, this, of the videos. I, I should. I'm sure I will. I've just kind of been getting, I've uh, been doing a lot of the same thing for the first three or four months here, kind of getting used to the camera. Now I'm really used to the camera, so I can start experimenting and doing things like that. I would never shoot in JPEG only though, actually to answer your question. I would shoot in RAW plus JPEG, but then you're really filling that card up and everything. So I just, everything goes into Lightroom anyway, just so I can get to it later if I need to. I can't have a bunch of folders and things. It's got to all be organized in, in Lightroom for me. So doing JPEG only, going straight out of the camera to post it somewhere is just not me. I, I just That's just not something I do. Harry, Harry Verinen, Harry Verinen says, nice video. I have had GR3 half month now. Really good and small camera. It's the only way to take snapshot. Just press shutter button rapidly. It makes my camera to shake. 
Okay, I think if we unpack that, what he's saying is, I don't know exactly, but I think what he's saying there is, I mean, I didn't mean, I mean, I'm not putting words into his mouth, but I think what he was saying was the snap feature, the snap focus mode, like me, I don't like the full press thing because I'm doing this number every time I do it. So I actually set snap focus as the only focus at all that I can use, and that's what I use. Since video number eight, uh, that's all I use is snap focus. I don't stop, focus, click. Just me. Everybody does their own thing. Maybe six weeks from now I'll be doing something different. Bob Tin Clay. Enjoying your videos. My GR3 arrived today. Can't wait to try it out. Excellent. That was, again, this was a few weeks ago, so hopefully you've tried that out. Bob, let me know. I want to hear the, I want to see the results. I want to hear the results. Hashtag the stealth photographer. Hashtag the stealth photographer. Maybe that'll work. Jonathan's back with us. Again, we're going chronologically backwards. Hi, Jason, great POV. Uh, did you use full, full press snap focus setting, uh, which you can use with autofocus, or did you use snap focus setting only? Man, I'm going out, I'm going out to try this with my GR3 ASAP. Hopefully he got out and tried that, and I think I just covered that, that I, I don't like that. Uh, in the small town portrait video, or, or, or whatever that was called, David Sanchez says, cool video. Glad you're enjoying your Rico. I have one also inspiring me to take mine out. Take care. Thanks, David. Hopefully you got out and got yours uh, and already had that out shooting. Uh, Marcus Rom, greetings from Germany. Hello, Germany. I have also the GR3 and the GR1. I wouldn't mind having a GR1 also. I feel like I could just throw it around or not care. Maybe go to sandy areas or wet areas, not worry about dust and things because you know, the GR1. Um, I have a lot of dust on the sensor. Okay, so I buy the GA1 and UV filter for the GR3, hope it will work against the dust. Well, A, you've got the dust sensor thing in there now that vibrates and shakes that sensor off in the GR3, plus the GA1 hood and the UV filter. I don't see how it cannot help. I mean, I don't, I mean, if you're in a dust storm, I'm not taking mine to a beach or anything like that because when you got all that sand granules flying around, I never like to do that with my cameras. I rarely go to a beach with a camera because the air is full of dust. Even if you're not in a dust storm, there's beach dust flying around and all that stuff. It gets in your ears and camera and nooks and crannies and I just, I don't like it. So, you know, I'm, I'm very careful where I take my cameras. Hick, 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 hip, 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 Okay, it's on the screen. He says, I'm still thinking about whether to save money buying a GR2. Well done for shooting. By the way, greetings from Russia. Russia with love, my brother. I, I hope that, um, let me know what you decided. I mean, I, I don't think anybody will fault you for going with a GR2. Again, the dust thing could be a problem long run, but you're paying four to five hundred dollars for a GR2, so it might be worth it. I think what you're paying for the extra, the, the nine total nine hundred dollars for the GR3, the dust sensor, and um, plus you're plus you're at 24 megabytes, so you're 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 going to get better blowups, better enlargements. Geo Gallant says uh, he's back and says. Uh, I've been going out this past week trying different things on the GR3. Cool to see somebody else. Oh, does that mean we're done? I guess we're done. Okay, sorry. I love reading these. That's awesome. Do I have any more? Come on, guys. No more? No more questions? I guess not. I've got a bunch of pages on. On trip. Oh, they're cutting the grass. Okay, well, we're about done. Okay, so here, here's okay. So for for those of you playing along at home, here's what we're doing. So I, again, guys, thank you so much for those comments. You can see I'm going to use these, right? Every couple months, I'm going to use these comments. Maybe every month, depending on how many videos I get put out and uh, how many comments we get. Um, and when you, a lot of people, there are more of the comments than that. People saying, "Hey, cool, thanks, great video, and all that stuff." And 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 trust me, I like those. I mean, trust me, you, there, there there's no money in this, right? And I spend hours and hours putting these together. The, the editing is, I mean, I'm not a video editor, man. It just takes forever. So trust me, just a, even, even a like is just like, oh, wow, somebody liked it. That's pretty awesome. The fact that people leave comments is just, it amazes me. The fact that people watch these amazes me. 
but um, they're going to get, I, I keep saying they're going to get better, but I feel like I'm learning now. I feel like I've got my feet under me. I feel like I've got a good grasp of what I'm doing. I'm not trying to be a filmmaker. I'm not trying to get better per se. I'm just trying to make the ones I'm doing decent. So I think part of that's going to be getting into some different areas, uh, territory I'm not familiar with, some new towns, things like that swelling up here as well okay guys i think that's going to about do it here for this video please like please subscribe please go and check out the podcast uh, i think that's all i want to talk about right now we'll get into some more stuff on the next video the next video you see from me will be a street video i will be on the streets i hope it's not the indianapolis videos i hope it's from cincinnati that's that's my goal here this week cincinnati Cincinnati or what, what do you say Cincinnati or bust that's what we're going for Cincinnati or bust and if I'm lucky I'll even get to Louisville both those places are 90 minutes away from me and I know worldwide you've heard of both of those towns they're not huge uh, but but you've heard of them and they're gonna look a little different than what you're used to seeing on my videos so uh, no matter what I think we're gonna be okay even if I get no photos, I don't know if there's anybody walking around those towns, but I'm going to be videotaping and we'll be talking and, and we'll have some fun with it and, and, and I'll let you experience the journey with me. So again, guys, I appreciate it and I will see you on the next video. Should be a street video and we'll be back here in another week or so and with, with some more tips and, and things like that and, and hopefully we can get you out on the streets and doing some shots for you, not just watching my shots. All right, guys, we'll see you on the next one. Take care.